the intention of the Akami wasn't to try it, but to loot or steal, not peace, but war, a partnership. About to go into the slave castles, how you feeling? I'm really scared. I'm very emotional, so I think I'm gonna cry a lot. Um, I think that we're learning about slavery in like an economical sense. So to see how brutal it actually was, like I'm terrified right now. Do you feel after the lecture when they spoke about kind of like all of the numbers and statistics and whatnot? I think that it's way worse than what they described it as. Like I think the numbers are way worse than what was on the screen. So. Yeah. Do you feel like that's going to be like depicted when you're seeing it in the in the castle? Yeah, especially when we go to where they had their like last bath. I think I'm just going to freak out, honestly. Well, talking around to other people, like I feel like they said that they're just going to feel heavy and they're not really going to cry. But I know me, like when I feel heavy, I cry. Oh, we're about to go. I'm feeling blessed, bro. You know, blessed to be able to uh, see this part of history. Blessed to be able to see this part of my people, and everything like that. You know, uh, just interested to learn. Always, always excited to learn. You know, it's crazy though. I thought I ran this today. What's up? What's your name? Sadiq. Sadiq, I'm really sure. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you from Brazil. Oh, cool. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask Seeing that uh, in today's world, coming to the slave dungeon is as easy as one can. But in the past, that wasn't the case for the captives. The captives had to walk as far as Cameroon, Nigeria, Benin, Togo, Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, the northern part of Ghana, there's a place called Salaga Slave Market. And from there, they came to Sandina, called Asin Manson. Asin Manson is a slave river. That was where they to have their last part before they were already here. And over here, they were imprisoned for two to three months before they were shipped away. Not forgetting the menstrual cycle of women. And from here, to the new world. From here to Brazil, to about 12 weeks, sometimes 13 weeks, depending on the weather. And not all of them were able to make it to the final destination. Some were deliberately thrown overboard, especially when you are found to be weak and you cannot make it to the plantation. You say that there were 1,000 enslaved people in this very place at a given time? Yes. And not forgetting the fact, they were also bringing them day in and day out as well. And people are, like people are deceasing and coming in yeah. regularly. Yeah. How many times have you been here? 
Is it like part of your curriculum? Like when you were like in like grade school and stuff like that, it's like part of your curriculum? Yeah, it's part of your curriculum. Everybody, like, they try to come here. So this is all this year school? Yeah, when you try to do that. This particular time there, 150 of them were sleeping on the floor as hard as it takes. And when they got here, they were very weak. And as women, you have the administration practically, they did everything on the floor. That is why you cannot underestimate the stench and the heat away. And as a result, most of them died. And when they died, they were not buried. They were removed and thrown into the ocean for the fish to feed them. They gave them something small to eat just to keep them alive. Some ate, some refused to eat. They preferred to die. So, the whole brother led to another room called magazine where they kept the ammunition. And when there's a leakage, the chemicals came straight to this room and were saved a really bad situation. To me, the intention of their coming wasn't to try it, but to loot or steal, not peace, but war. A partnership that is linked. Any questions? I think that one thing to say is that you can get a point. There is no more use And also, the Europeans did not want their children to go wayward or astray. So they built houses in town, kept those pregnant women over there four or five years later. They went for their children, brought them back here, and gave them formal education. So formal education started from this very castle, and those children of the Europeans became the first elite in the society, and they felt superior over the indigenous. sea was touching the castle, but it has receded. So when the ships came, a smaller boat was brought here to convey them to the big ships before they were taken away. Taken to Brazil, Guyana, Suriname, Liverpool, the Caribbean, and America. These were brought here to pay tribute to those who died here. One minute, sir. and it is written in Dutch. It was put there in the memory of one Dutch governor. His name was Tert. He came from Zealand and he was um, the last director general of the West Indies Company. He arrived here on the 16th of January 1788 at the age of 40 when he was buried here. He died out of malaria or yellow fever. He wrote something in a form of a tribute for Tet. Now that you were saying it was that Governor Tet was just, honest, and God feared. At the time of slavery, somebody being just, honest, and God fearing, it is only him who can explain that. From here, you walk straight to this world first of all. But don't forget, I will lock you up. Now. And the cell that you are in was not for the Africans. 
is not for the European soldiers who decided the Dutch soldiers who were themselves drunk and misbehaved, or who went out to that seeking permission from the authorities. They sent them in there for some hours and freaked, and because it was so long, it was well ventilated. They considered it very, very good because no African was put in there. In there, no food, no water. The main man is three days. The walls of the castle, the metals. Sending only positive energy to the ancestors. I've never been in this place, so I'm like reckoning with it all at once. And you know, and you know that it's like, at the end of the day, like a lot of the people that deal with it in the Americas don't get to come here yeah. and don't get to experience it. I, I feel like, like unknown, like ambiguous pain, and now I feel like I can also I can put a place to it. It's overall, I guess, a feeling kind of. It's heavy. I was just existing in gratitude because it just made me feel and realize just how, just how tethered we are to it, but in the same breath, untethered to it. Yeah. Like it's it's still crazy to wrap your head around that like your my distant ancestors was literally in this castle suffering. When we were listening to the lectures, I was like, UNESCO wanted to memorialize this, like destroy them all, like destroy them all, like, like, the, like the conservative statues. But then like I'm thinking about it as like a site of reckoning, a site of appreciation, a site of Remember. history and remembrance when textbooks and um, Western media doesn't have that same history at the forefront, so there has to be memorabilia somewhere. 
all of this gets just glossed over and you don't feel that you don't get the actual numbers you don't get the actual like like division yeah the university of cape coast you don't get the actual division until you start hearing about all the tribes and what happened and like how it's fractured this anti people i just so filled with history as well it's it's crazy to think that 10 percent of the slave trade all were exported from ghana like my dna makeup is 20 percent ghanaian 30 percent nigerian like i think like eight percent senegambian and like now i'm thinking about it like bro like there's no way that my peoples did not go through here yeah i'm just appreciative that a central west african country finds it important to free some of these things in time yeah. and to preserve them that's it you're welcome thank you when we talk about who we are when we talk about our ancestors and their suffers people get to know their true self information they say is power once kept away from the people who are supposed to benefit from it they are being rendered power as blacks in the communities, we are governed by the system. We are not allowed to talk about who our ancestors are or what they suffered because it looks horrible. If we are allowed to talk about our ancestors, we get to know ourselves. It empowers us. We know where our people were captured from. We know where they were taken to and how they moved them across oceans and how they suffered. Today you are here as students who want to learn and you have been to the dungeons. Long before the arrival of the Europeans onto this land, we live on a very big, vast land. The oldest known name of the land was Akebulan. The word Akebulan means land of humanity, land of all creations. Others call it Garden of Eden. Under the pretense of being explorers, they came into this particular land. They named the land Africa. They changed the name from Akebulan to Africa. The word Africa was derived from a Latin word, Africa which means sunny. From the Greek word Africa, spelled A-P-H-R-I-K-A. -A, and that means land without coldness. So they named the land Africa because of what they saw. And the, uh, the word Africa to many historians simply means children or people of the sun. When you look at the Ghana map, we are talking about the top to the bottom from north to south, not all of that. You see, not all of our ancestors were even picked from Gold Coast. When you cross the borders in the northern sector, you are going to Burkina Faso. Head towards a little bit and you are meeting Mali and then Niger. Those places, they, keep, they kept our ancestors in chains and shackles, captured them and brought them into this territory. They had already walked for 400 miles. From Salaga to this place, 400 miles and beyond, mostly, Three months, they had to be walking through the forest. 653 kilometers journey. In your bus, you will do about 16 to 18 hours to Salaga. But they had to walk. In their chains and shackles, receiving whips, our ancestors made it to this place. Oh, I'm cold. Oh. It's pretty zoomed out. You can see your body. Mm hmm. I can't wait for South Africa and like going to the tourist. I, this is definitely my favorite part. Of, I guess like traveling is yeah the history stuff. It's so interesting. It'd be like crazy that like everybody from K through 12 here is an ag um, aggressive salesman. Oh, no cap. <laughs> like them kids is two years old talking about, what's your name? <laughs> You're so beautiful. Yeah. What? No, my Fish name, pound. My name is Joseph. Remember that. Remember that. What? Remember my name. That's <laughs> yeah.
which has its source from this particular community, flowing from the mountain and joining with the Ochi. They took our ancestors in there with the chains, came there to bathe themselves. But then they, they killed them, dumped them all around. The place is full of a mad graveyard. We call it the bamboo slave dumping site. You see, you and I are not here as enslaved people. So then I stopped taking people down this way. You are not here for a last bath. The ancestors had already taken the last bath on our behalf. So then we created this first bath of return. During the year of return, many diasporans were coming. So to symbolize their return, we created this. For them to have access to the river, go in there, put your feet into the river, wash your hands, get the water touching some part of the body. Sure you're in the top. That's the best of for it. Uh, this is hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's, what? It's, okay. it's, oh my gosh, like, wait, let me take a picture. It's like perfectly with He is lying to you, is. That <laughs> looks like. <laughs> Yo, it looks like, like you just left, but like you just fell on the ground. Hello. Yes, it is. All right, let's go. It's been a great, you know, day, first day. We're out here in Cape Coast. Uh, we went to the Elmina Slave Castle, and then we came here to the River of No Return. The River of No Return. And I'm not going to lie, the first slave castle going to Elmina was kind of very heavy, you know, very... It's right in your face. There's not much that you could kind of, like... You know, there's no sidestep in it. Like you're gonna feel those emotions. You're gonna feel kind of like everybody feeling that, and it's because like there's so much cramped space. Like you just, it, it really makes you feel what a lot of people have gone through and what a lot of our ancestors have gone through. And it's like I don't know, being there is, is just unique because you never, you learn about the history, but you don't feel that history. And for me, it was kind of sad because. I'm in, you know, I'm in Ghana, and I just been blessed to go through this experience. You know, I just know that most of my people won't experience this, and and won't find this out. And now it's like because I've experienced this, I get to tell people, I get to show people, and like I get to now it's like I gotta make sure my parents come out here. I gotta make sure my kids come out here when I, hopefully, I have them in the future. Um, and it's just. I'm, I'm blessed. And here it's like a perfect ending because now it's like you get to kind of cleanse after what happened today. You know, you got to dip your feet in. You got to, you know, just dip your hands in, feel good and stuff like that. And the the tour guide for, for today was was simply amazing. Hey, what's going on? I mean, I'm a little sweaty, but that's okay because the sweat came from the same place my ancestors swept. Uh, blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, I just had a beautiful, uh, emotional, uh, informational day. Just a lot, just a lot been going on, learning a lot of things that I knew, but uh, delving deeper into the, into the history of, um, of my people and, and the hurt that, that has been caused to them. And just uh, seeing it all unfold in front of my face has just been an amazing experience. 
I don't have too much to say, but um, for the next couple of days, don't call me Carson. Call me Kwaku. That's my dad's first name and my first name. Samuel Carson. Really? Wow, that's crazy. Really? Yeah. Samuel Carson. Samuel Carson. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's, that's literally beautiful. I took a picture of that. Nah, bro, what? That's crazy, because I heard him saying that. What the hell? Ethan, what's your